Welcome back to Grade 7 History, Unit Number 1, New France and British North America, 1713 to 1800. This is Lesson Number 6, What Were the Causes of the Seven Years' War? Before we begin today's lesson, let's consider the following. One, what causes wars to break out? And two, does there have to be a minimum or maximum number of countries involved to have a war? So put the video on pause for a couple of minutes to think about your answers to these two questions because I want to have a little talk about this at the start of our next class. So put the video on pause now. All right, let's proceed. By 1754, tensions between the French, the British, and the First Nations had been building for more than a decade. French-British conflicts were breaking out more frequently. Both sides wanted more land and more resources, and to establish their control over the land. They needed people to fight to defend it. Conflicts were also breaking out between the settlers and the First Nations, who were growing angrier with the settlers, who were taking native lands by force. Now, the French-Indian War was that part of the Seven Years' War, which was fought in North America, and was the result of rising tension between the French, the British, and the First Nations. Uh, we're going to be referring to this war as the Seven Years' War war. Uh, but when we talk about the Seven Years' War, what we're really focusing on is the French-Indian War, which took place in New France and North America in general. Conflict in the Ohio Valley was heating up. The British were going ahead with plans to create new settlements and force the French out. The French reacted by attacking British settlers across the frontier and setting fire to their homes. Many settlers were killed, seriously injured, or scared into abandoning their new homes. The French built more forts in the Ohio Valley to scare away any British settlers who were thinking of moving into the territory. I'll just direct your attention to this black and white image on the left. Frustrated First Nations warriors also took part in attacks on the British soldiers. This illustration shows French General Montcalm trying to calm his native allies and prevent further bloodshed. As we learned in an earlier lesson, the British captured Fortress Louisbourg in 1745. A 1748 peace treaty returned the fortress to the French in 1748. However, another military conflict in 1758 resulted in the British capturing the fortress once more. This conflict not only affected British and French settlers living in the area, the fighting also impacted the First Nations. Delaware Chief Shingas was one of several First Nations leaders who expressed their desire to see the settlers and soldiers take the fighting back to Europe and leave North America alone. And this painting on the left shows the British trying to make peace with the Delaware tribe. However, Chief Shingas was not having any of it. In 1754, the governor of New France ordered the construction of Fort Duquesne, near what is now Pittsburgh. Because it was in a strategic position, the British desired to capture the fort. The governor of Virginia sent a militia led by future American President George Washington to drive out the French. The French, along with their native allies, responded with a massive military force of their own. Many historians point to the battle for Fort Duquesne as the start of the Seven Years' War in North America. The British would return several times to try to capture the fort. They would be successful in capturing Fort Duquesne in 1758. In the 1700s, European economies were based on the system of mercantilism. 
Under mercantilism, a country manufactures and produces goods made from resources that are taken from lands which that country owns. The country makes a profit by selling goods to its colonies and by limiting the amount of goods it buys from other countries. Exploring other parts of the world was a necessary way to find new markets in which to sell goods. For example, tea and spices from India, along with sugar from the West Indies, were sold to settlers in North America. Normally, European rulers wanted to collect gold and silver from their colonies. But the French and the British also valued the fish, furs, grains, timber, and tobacco that came from their North American colonies. In 1754, the British added to their tax on French forts by seizing hundreds of French merchant ships. Those are ships loaded with goods for trade. During one conflict off the coast of Newfoundland, British ships set their sights on French ships carrying 3,000 troops and supplies. Clearly, the French were preparing for war, and the British were intent on being the victors of this war. And following our first test of the semester, we will be looking pretty in depth at the Seven Years War and what exactly happened to the French, British, and Native peoples during the war and in the years following. But for now, let's finish today's lesson by considering the following. One, what were the short-term causes of the Seven Years' War? Uh, number two should say, what were the long-term causes of the Seven Years' War? So by short-term, I mean, uh, what were things happening just before the war that caused the fighting to break out? And by long term, I mean, what were the things that were going on for years that were causing the tensions to build up to the point of war? And number three, do you see any similarities or differences between the causes of the Seven Years' War and the causes of other wars you have studied? So, when I'm done talking, please put the video on pause so you can write down your responses to these three questions. We will discuss them in tomorrow's class. If you don't feel prepared to answer any or all of these questions, it means you need to go back, watch this video at least a couple of more times, and then when you're ready, put the video on pause. And as always, I look forward to hearing everybody's responses in our next class. But until then, that concludes today's video.